number one, I'm not trying to 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 shove anything out anybody's throat. I'm really only posting because because uh, I just wanted to share, right? But at the very same time, if there's not really a gain from that, then I might as well just stop doing it. The places that I focus my attention are on Instagram, my business, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, because the people that follow me there are encouraged and inspired by what I'm doing and I can actually teach them and now I'm having an impact. I've heard um, a few times, and I haven't mentioned myself about networking events. How do you gain access to networking events, to information? Um, I don't see it, and maybe I'm, I guess I'm in the wrong sp spaces, the wrong spots for not following those uh, on, on the proper social media channels. How do you get access to social or um, invest to network? Yeah, great, great. Another great question. So I'll give you a two part answer. The first one is the event that I was at in Tampa. My mentor, the, the one I told you guys, I paid 55 grand to be a part of that that inner circle last year. We had a, a two day event in Tampa for just our inner circle. OK. But then my mentor was actually having his own like conference. So we just ended up staying the rest of the week for his conference. So that's kind of how that particular case came about. However, so so I guess the, the essence of what I'm saying is your network becomes your network, right? So the more that you start to join, like being here even, this is part of a networking event, quite honestly, if y'all utilize the Facebook group appropriately, that's another piece of the homework. That's the dynamic that I'm trying to, to perpetuate. Uh, so, so that's the one thing to invest to get in the right rooms. The second piece is on your social media. You have to ask yourself, is the, is the stuff that comes up feeding the narrative of your future or not? And if it's not, then I would highly recommend to follow less of those people and then just go start following like the key people in, in every arena that you, that you're interested in. And when I say key people, it doesn't necessarily mean that. So let's just say when you think of commercial multifamily, you think of Grant Cardone, right? He's everywhere. I don't necessarily like Grant from a, um, I don't align with a lot of his movement, right? Uh, in terms, I think his business prowess is phenomenal. We just, I just don't relate on like a personal level. So he's not somebody that I want to just keep consuming his content because of that reason, right? But if I follow Grant, then the 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 algorithm is so sophisticated that it'll start showing you more people like Grant. So then maybe myself will pop up. Maybe, right? So you'll start to get different people that you didn't even, you weren't even aware of that'll start popping up. You can start following those people as well. And then you chew the meat and spit out the ball. So then you can start getting rid of the ones that you really don't care for. But it'll trick, trick the algorithm to at least gauge what your new interests are and then you will start to see the advertising pop up for the various things that you're interested in. So my my pri my personal Facebook, I was just telling my wife the other day, I'm like, it's really no gain for posting on it, right? We went to Greece back in October. We put a bunch of stuff up for our 15 year anniversary, but it's it's a lot of childhood friends, it's family, it's people that aren't a part of my life. If I didn't have that Facebook page, I, I'd have no communication with them, right? And the truth is, I really don't gain anything from showing them all that. It probably just upset more people than it do inspire them, quite honestly, right? Because there's more of the people that I grew up with. There's more of the people that we come from the same place. And I honestly, I like looking at it periodically because it reminds me of how far I came from, to be honest. But I told her that I may just even stop posting on my private Facebook page because it, it it's not... Like, number one, I'm not trying to 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 shove anything out anybody's throat. I'm really only posting because because I just wanted to share. Right. But at the very same time, if there's not really a gain from that, then I might as well just stop doing it. The places that I focus my attention are on Instagram, my business, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, because the people that follow me there are encouraged and inspired by what I'm doing and I can actually teach them. And now I'm having an impact. Right. So so through that process, though, I may find myself finding content that was interesting at one point in time 
and following somebody. But then as I started consuming more of their content, I'm like, uh, I don't like the way that made me feel when I consume it. And so I do an audit on who I'm following probably once a month. And I just start unfollowing people. And now and, and I know that sounds again, that sounds simple, but when you start to, especially when you start to meet people on social media and it feel like y'all really are connected, but then a season of change and you don't really subscribe to what they're talking about anymore. It, it almost feels like you're cutting off a relationship. It's, it's weird, you know what I mean? To where you almost really feel attached to those folks. But then you have to realize that nobody is going to protect your fate. Your, nobody's going to protect your well-being other than you. That's just what it is, right? Like even for toxic relationships and friendships and environments we may be in, they're not going to be like, man, you should get away from me because you know I'm toxic. That, that's never going to happen, right? So it's up to us to take the responsibility of, of really monitoring and auditing what are we consuming because eventually what you consume will consume you.